Mikey, how are you? What's been going on? Eh, I'm okay. Well, in your email, you said you wanted to speak right away because you needed to talk. Is everything okay? So the other day, I was uh, trying to film myself in the gym, but I couldn't even film a one clip. I was too scared. Hmm. What were you scared of exactly? Was it someone or something? Yeah, there's this super cute girl. Uh, she was in the, the dumbbell section with me. Uh, I was doing my incline dumbbell press. Uh, 120s for 12, it's, it's a pretty strong, right? Anyways, I put the phone on the rack because I wanted to show people on Instagram the pump I was, I was, I, I cannot tell you, I was having such a nice a pump. My nonna, she made a lasagna the night before. It was feeling so nice. I wanted to show them and then give them a little few tips, a little tricks and so forth. And then what happened? Well, cute girl, uh, what's her name? Uh, th I think it's a Brittany. She kept uh, looking at me when I was uh, setting up on uh, my phone to film. So I just uh, pick it up and I just pretend like it don't work. And then I just don't film myself. Did you think she was judging you? No, she didn't say that, but you know, the, the, the body language, you could tell. Ah, that makes sense. So let me ask you this. What if she was judging you and you continue to film yourself anyways, despite what she thought? Well, uh, all the people were getting in the shot. It was kind of a mess and my camera was a little dirty. Mikey, you're not answering my question. Well, I guess I, f I was uh, too scared to film myself because I thought other people were judging me when uh, in the reality, they probably don't even care. Wow, Mikey. I am very proud of you. Thanks. I was in my own head. I know what my intentions are. I wanna help people with the fitness, the food, all things in that world. I was just too scared to film myself because I, uh, I was too worried of what everybody else would think. Mikey, that's okay. And it's completely normal. You can't let that control you though, because otherwise you'll never end up filming yourself. Yeah, you're right. So what do I gotta do to get through this? Well, I'm not an expert in the gym, Mikey, but I do have a friend. His name is Enrico Incarnati. Enrico Incarnati? He sounds Italian. Is he Italian? Yes, he is. That's not the main focus. He's actually helped a lot of people specifically with filming in the gym. Actually, I believe he has a video specifically filming yourself in the gym to help people like you. Let me find it. Let me ask you this. Can I just hire him to do it? I would rather have him film me and do it instead of me doing it. Yes, you absolutely could. Ah, this video right here. This video shows you how to film yourself in the gym. And if you want to work with him, Mikey, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to work with you. Just send him a DM on Instagram. Ah, okay. If I found this helpful, I'm definitely subscribing. Uh, we can watch a little bit of this video and then I'll send you the link, but let's watch this together. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to film yourself in the gym from a videographer perspective. I am a videographer. My name is Enrico Incarnati. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button to see more videos like this. I am going to give you the best tips that you need to film yourself in the gym, to get all the angles, to feel more confident, and to have the most badass videos that you possibly can, whether it's with your phone, a camera, what kind of setup you need. I'm gonna go over all that in this video. So sit back, relax, and here we go. Alright y'all, so we just arrived at the gym. I wanted to fly the drone for a nice transition shot. But let's just say, if I would have flown the drone, we probably wouldn't have one anymore. Well, why would, why would we not have one anymore, Rico? Great question. It's really windy outside, so there's a lot of gusts, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not scared if there's like a little bit of wind and it can, it can fight that. But when there's like heavy gusts that just come in, that's what was happening. I, I didn't even try to fly it because I just felt it and I can see why like the flags and how trees are moving that it's not the best conditions to fly and the drone would have to fight super hard to stay in the air. We're also near a very busy street and I don't want it to, God forbid, there's a gust of wind that takes it and it just plummets it into the street and then we don't have a drone anymore. So we're avoiding that. 
So with that being said, we are at the gym, and yes, I'm gonna bring in my camera, I'm gonna bring in my tripod, my little Joby Gorilla Pod, my phone stand, my phone, I'm gonna bring in the whole nine yards just to film today. Now this is super important and I want you to pay attention. A lot of people struggle to film themselves in the gym because they're worried about what other people are going to think. And I completely understand that. I have empathy for you and I, I get it. Here's the thing and this is the truth. This is something that I really, really want you to understand is people are going to judge you no matter what. People are going to look at you funny. People are gonna wonder what you have. Why do you have a camera? Why are you setting it up here? Why are you getting all prepared to film whatever it is you're doing? People are going to question. People are going to wonder they're gonna to wanna to be curious about what it is you're doing and here's the truth continue to do it anyways focus on what it is that you're doing right you're filming because you have a purpose you want to either show it to your coach show it to your clients whatever that is you know your purpose you know your intentions with it and continue to do that and just stick with that now since today we are filming in the gym i am actually going to hit a workout today we're going to do an upper body day and i know i've been talking a lot let's just go into the gym rico stop filming just go to the gym yes okay we're going we're going we're going All right, y'all, so we are in the gym right now. I have another camera rolling right now, as you can see, just so you can see behind the scenes as to what it looks like with me. The way I like to approach filming with any, literally any aspect is there's always a story and there's always a journey that I wanna take you on. So the journey that I wanna take you on is of my workout, right? The journey within this is we wanna get an establishing shot. That's tip number one. Always have an establishing shot so you show people where you're at, right? or whatever you're doing. For example, the first exercise that I'm gonna be doing is a row, right? It's a three-point row. So the first establishing shot that I wanna show you is location. Where am I at? What am I doing? I have three sets of, of this exercise. So I wanna show you each rep, but each rep is gonna have a different angle, right? But the whole story and the whole journey is gonna stay the same. So the first shot that you wanna get is an establishing shot. Show the scene, show where you're at. Get people an idea as to what you're doing, where you're at placement-wise, and go from there. Also, really quick, we have to warm up. I usually don't warm up, um, but my coach has been telling me that I have to warm up and I've been working with him for about the past few months. So we're gonna warm up and then we'll get into our workout. <laughs> So I've already had some people stare at me just because like I set the camera up in a pretty open area to where they can see it But for me, it's like look I'm focusing on myself. I'm filming me I'm not worried about filming anyone else, but it's like at the end of the day They don't care people continue on with their set They're or they're gonna continue on walking filling up their water Whatever it is that they're doing and it's like I think a lot of us get in our own head to where it's like we see other people looking at us They know what we're doing and it's like oh crap. I have to stop because they're they're weird about it, but it's like they don't care, you know what I mean? They see it, but it's like, oh cool. And they just walk away. Or maybe they're like, what is he doing? But at the end of the day, they're just focused on what they're doing, right? So it's like, focus on what you're doing, stay true to who you are, you know what your intentions are, and at the end of the day, it's like, just keep going. Okay, so we're about to do our first exercise, which is gonna be a three-point row. I'm gonna be doing it right over there I'm in that squat rig with one of those boxes and just pressing up against that and using that as a leverage point. Now, this is an establishing shot. The importance of an establishing shot is to set the scene. That is number one, right? The reason we wanna set the scene is because we wanna see where you're at, me, which is I'm gonna be the subject, or you, wherever you're at, let's set the subject, right? Now, this is more so for storytelling. If you wanna just see different angles, see different shots, I'm gonna show you guys that, but this is more so pertaining to storytelling and getting more intimate, which is what I like to call with your shots. We have three sets of this exercise. As you're gonna see, as I progress, we're gonna get more intimate with the shot, right? I'm gonna be the subject of the shot. We're gonna get more intimate with it. So you're gonna start to see a little bit more. There's gonna be more detail. We're gonna get closer to the subject with each shot. So again, first set, just an established shot. <laughs> So that was our first shot. That was the establishing shot. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch up the angles, but each angle is gonna get a little bit closer to the shot. Remember we talked about it being more intimate with the shot. So this next shot is gonna be a side view of me doing the exact same movement, but it's gonna be a little bit closer now. All right, so we have one more set of this. As you see, we're getting closer and closer to the subject, seeing what the subject is doing, right? 
This all has to do with storytelling and getting more intimate with your shots. So next shot now, we're gonna get that much closer now, get more into the personal space. It's gonna be an up close shot of my face because now we have the establishing shot, what the actual exercise is, getting a little bit closer, seeing the dumbbell. Now we're gonna wanna see some expression on the face just to get that much more detail, right? And the whole time, we're getting different angles of this as well. All right, next exercise we are doing is a dumbbell incline press. I'm gonna show you all of the next exercise simply using my phone. I highly, highly recommend if you don't have one of these, this is a Joby Gorilla Pod. You can get either this one. This one's a little bit expensive. It's about like a hundred something dollars. You can get cheaper ones much like this that you can literally wrap around any object in the gym. So I'm gonna wrap this around even something like the, uh, the dumbbell rack over here. And I'm gonna show you what that shot looks like with it facing on me and also a phone holder. Getting one of these on Amazon, I think it's like eight bucks. Super cheap, very affordable. All you do, insert your phone here, and then you can either have it vertical or horizontal. For the sake of this video, we're gonna film it all horizontal because it's YouTube. If you're filming it for, let's say, your Instagram story or something like TikTok, you wanna film it vertically because that's the dimensions for those platforms. Something like Facebook, YouTube, definitely wanna go horizontal. This is all gonna to pertain to angles. So a variety of angles matters a ton when it comes to your videos because then that way you can show people different varieties within your same shot, right? One exercise, I know it can look stagnant sometimes to where it's like, well, we have the same exercise, what much more can I show them? Totally understand that. What you can do though is diversify your shots to have more of a variety to put together. Let's say you're making a video, a YouTube video, you're making a swipe video on Instagram. You can show different versions of the video and also you can give more tips, whether it's showing it from the front, showing it from the side, showing different cues because you want people to see your feet in the different positions to show like, hey, make sure your feet are flat here instead of just, instead of just filming it from the back and people really can't see much, you can give different cues, different tips from different angles. So again, all these next shots are gonna be filmed on my phone of me. I'm gonna show you with this camera what that looks like. By this is when it comes to getting your shots in the gym and filming yourself if you don't have a tripod or you don't have a phone holder and you need some way to get your foot your photos or videos using your phone and also using a prop for example this water bottle right what you can do is set it up like this and prop your phone up against it as a little kickstand and just have it be steady and sturdy up here like that if we can get it and it'll hold right you can do this on the ground you can do this on another piece of equipment you can also do this even on this seat right here, just prop it up and film yourself. There's endless possibilities with creativity with this. I'm gonna show you one, actually I'm gonna show you two. One is gonna be placing my phone in a cup holder on another machine, and then another one is gonna be placing my uh, cup on the ground with it propped up, showing you what that shot looks like. Okay, so here's what this shot looks like. This is with my phone propped up in another machine. This one, I'm gonna be operating on that one. The phone is in the cup holder, and I'm gonna be doing straight arm lap pull downs, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Okay, so next shot, prop my phone up using the water bottle, and my phone is just like that. Now the other thing that I did was I put my phone in 0.5 magnification, so I got a wider angle just because it's a little bit lower, and I want to be able to see all of this, all the shot as much as possible, so this is what that looks like. I know this might be a little tricky for some people and this might tie in with the whole confidence thing. If you need someone to film you, just ask. Literally what just happened was I had my camera in my hand and I was wondering what do I want to say next for this clip? I want to like, I want to segue it. And there was a perfect transition point. A gentleman asked me, he was doing a preacher film machine. He's like, do you need me to hold the camera? I'm like, no, I'm good. Thank you. I just, I was trying to think of what I wanted to say next. Um, so it just goes to show like, just ask, right? Like if you want someone to help you film a shot or if you're trying to get a shot and like, maybe you can't prop it up yourself or maybe you can't, you don't have like the tripod or anything, just ask, right? It doesn't hurt to ask. Just be like, hey, do you mind filming me for this set? Just hold it like this, just show them. Already have it recording and just be like, if you could just stand here real quick, I truly appreciate it. Um, and if not, totally cool, but I just, I want to film this set if you don't mind. 
and I'm and I'm almost positive more than likely people will be like, yeah, no problem, sure. Um, so just ask. <laughs> Adding motion to your shots is a great way to diversify a static shot. Now what do I mean by this? This applies to if you have a partner with you filming, a girlfriend, boyfriend, or if you have a workout partner with you, having someone with their phone or a camera like I have being able to move around like this is adding motion to it. Now if you want to get into the specifics of it with editing, with how I'm doing it, I don't have anyone filming me, this is just on a tripod, I will show you at the end of the video how to add motion into your shots with using video editing to show motion. So the last couple shots that you saw were me adding fake motion via editing. Now, if you wanna see a full video on how I add fake motion, leave a comment below. I'm more than happy to make a video on how to add fake motion in your videos. Now, the way I did that and accomplished that, I will show you at the end of the video, was by keyframing, right? The way I did that was I took one point of the clip and brought it to another point of the clip. I scaled into the clip or I scaled out of the clip, right? That's what's called keyframing and how you can add fake motion to make it seem as if you're moving forward towards a shot or moving back towards a shot. That's what's known as keyframing. And again, if you want a full video on that, let me know in the comments below. Workout is done. We're now gonna go ahead and get something to eat because I'm hungry and honestly, if you've made it this far in the video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And that is going to be the video. I am going to show you guys how I keyframe shots like promised. So we're gonna hop into that in three, a two, a one. All right, so I'm gonna show you keyframing in less than a minute if I can. So I'm gonna show you, this is the clip right here that we're working with, and as you can see, I'm gonna play it back. As you can see, the motion of the clip where it started is pushing in towards me. Now I'll show you how I do that simply by going to the keyframing section. So I'm gonna click on this clip and select it here. I'm gonna reset everything so you can see fully. So I'm gonna start at the beginning of the clip, right? And I wanna make sure that the clip is highlighted. Now over here on the right-hand side, the scaling, this is what's gonna allow us to move in and out of the clip. So we're gonna go ahead and set that back to 100 because that's the default so we're gonna make sure that we are selected here and all the way on the right side this is a keyframe now you see all those scales are selected we are going to keyframe all the way to the end of this clip right here so make sure the clip is selected and I want to scale it in all the way to let's say 110 we're gonna hit enter and now you can see if we hover over the clip you see those numbers on the right hand side increasing and now when we play it back this is what that looks like and we can see the scale percentage going up. So that, my friends, is keyframing. That is scaling in your shot. Hope that helps, and I'll see you guys in the next clip. That is going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, it would mean the world if you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, turn on the bell for post notifications so you know when I post a new video. And I wanted to say, I hope this video helped you from a filming perspective in the gym. I hope it helped you open your eyes as to how to tell a story from filming within the gym, even as something as simple as just working out, getting different angles, why they're important, adding motion to your shots, different techniques that you can do, asking for help, and ultimately at the end of the day, just being more confident with being able to film yourself. I know it can be scary, and I know that it can be intimidating because people will look at you, people will question you, people will think certain things. At the end of the day, do you continue filming and be a fucking shark. Feel free if you guys have any questions to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment down below if I can help you with anything at all. Again, be a fucking shark. I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out.